This is me after only three weeks of hard work, successfully making the Darsh Choke one of the strongest submissions in my Jiu Jitsu arsenal. See, one month ago, I entered one of the biggest Noki Jiu Jitsu tournaments in the world. In round three, I was presented with an opportunity to submit my opponent with a front headlock attack. I ended up fumbling hard and losing the tournament and all the weeks and months of work and preparation and money spent to be there was lost. So for the last four weeks after the tournament, I've been developing a four mission system to reliably and efficiently attack the Darsh Choke to ensure that both you and I are never caught lacking again when given the gift of free head. After walking you through step by step through those missions, I'll take you to a local open mat to test out the system and prove why I am now levels ahead of the Ruotolo brothers. One of the biggest problems I initially had when learning the Darsh Choke was trying to figure out how to properly hold the front head. The two biggest details that I picked up that gave me the most success was to keep my chest over their head and use a chin strap to keep their head tucked into my ribs. And now that we've gained control over the front headlock, we'll start working to attack the Darsh with mission one, head pinch. The goal for mission one is to give us a route to take our opponent from the front headlock to their side to then attack the Darsh Choke. To simplify it, we're going to call the hand around the chin the A hand and the hand around the arm the B hand. The job of the B hand is to shoot under your opponent's near arm and head, allowing you to form a gable grip at the top of your opponent's neck. As I first started using this, I originally thought flaring my elbow and tilting at the crown of the head was more effective. And while that did collect a few darses, as I progressed through more higher level opponents, I knew something was off. What I came to learn is that keeping my elbows tight, pinching on the neck, not the crown of the head, and using a pulling and twisting motion gave me much better results. So with our opponent now on their side, let's talk about mission two. The objective of mission two is to cover this two inches of space, which is a lot if you ask any guy. Is two inches enough? No. However, to be able to clear these two inches is actually a lot harder than you might think. The main problem that I was running into is my opponent were back arch. This is where Kate and Tyru Solo come into play. After watching their matches, you can see as they go in to shoot the darts, their head dips onto their opponent's back or ribs, allowing them to shoot their hand a lot farther up their opponent's neck. To give you guys a clear example of mission one and two being used in high level jujitsu, let's take a look at this match featuring Michael Pixley at a Daisy Fresh. Michael utilized mission one, head pinch, forcing his opponent to his side. Oh shit. If we then direct our attention to Michael's head position, his opponent on bottom is back arching heavily. However, because Michael dipped his head to his opponent's ribs, it allowed him to reach far under his opponent's neck and lock up the darts. Then from there, this will bring us to mission three which is lock and load. For the basic part of this mission, we can go ahead and lock the Dars. However, a smaller detail that I picked up from Jordan teaches Jiu Jitsu is now that our arm and the Dars is very far over our opponent's neck, we need to move the lock and the blade of our wrist back over our opponent's artery to get the most effective choking pressure. If we go back to Pixley's match, we can see the Dars slowly sinking under his opponent's neck and the blade of Pixley's wrist cutting deep into his opponent's artery. This. Ah! Ah! Okay. Regarding the fourth and final mission, I'll be going over that during the live rounds. We'll be traveling back to North Carolina to challenge one of the gyms I started at, TFDC. So for the first round, we're going to be going up against a visiting white belt. I start off the round by pushing him backwards as I lift his foot in the air to get into my guard passing position. I'll immediately move to a position that's popular right now called camping. And from here, my opponent's going to turn in towards me, allowing me to shoot on the darts. However, I f*** up and I fail to deal with this hand on my hip, which allows him to frame and he nearly catches me in an armbar in the first few seconds of the round. <laughs> Things get a little worse for me as he's able to finally get that leg over my head and start to extend his hips away and pull my arm into the armbar. Now I'm trying to stay calm, as, as calm as I can after getting nearly tapped out by a white belt in the first like 30 seconds of the round, but luckily I'm able to stack him on his neck and from here I'll free my arm and then work back into my camping position. Now here's where we're going to see the implementation of the Dars into my passing game. So if you guys have watched the previous progression series videos, both North South and knee cut, basic knee cut, I developed the Dars for this specific reason. So for example, in the knee cut here, I'm not quite able to get the underhook. And as I go to fish for it and my opponent actually is able to get his underhook, I'm able to counter using the Dars, giving me a fail safe for my knee slice and opening up a submission opportunity, which I'm then able to capitalize using those missions. Now that one was good. But here's another sequence that I hit that better demonstrates each mission individually. In contrast to the last progression series, we used the knee cut, but now let's look at outside passing. As I hit a Toriando and dive into North South, my opponent extends his arm reaching out to my leg. Mission 1 and 2 get completed simultaneously as I wrap onto the head pinch and dip my head back to my opponent's ribs. 
ensuring that as my opponent falls to his side, I'm already in perfect position to complete mission 3, which is lock and load. As I lock the darts and move the blade of my wrist over my opponent's artery, we can then finish with mission 4, Nightmare Pillow. Similar to mission 3, where we shifted the blade of our wrist onto his neck, we're going to take our elbow from his armpit up towards his chest, giving us a twisting motion, essentially tucking our opponent in for the tap. My neck's been cranked for a while. Sorry. You're good, you're good. So it works on the white belts, but does it work on the blue belts? Let's see in this roll with Willie. So we begin this round by stutter stepping to the right and getting an easy pass with details that I'll be going over in a future progression series video on Torianos. But for now, we're gonna pass right in a neon belly and start hunting the darts immediately. Willie does a good job at avoiding it the first time, allowing me to go to north-south, almost securing a north-south choke, but he's able to defend this and I'm gonna have to find something different, which I'm sure you guys know what will be next. It's Pikachu! Now he'll actually start to turn into me, but because I have the underhook, I'm not able to attack the Darce. However, I'm able to get to a good position, circling around to his back, and start to threaten attacks from here. As I start to work towards more control, he explodes out, but actually puts himself back into north-south. And from here, he goes to wrestle up, trying to grab a leg. But this is exactly what I practiced the Darce for, so I'm able to execute mission one and put him directly into a head pinch. Mission 2 gets completed in the transition, with my hand already being in the perfect spot to start working on Mission 3, locking it up. However, as we moved up from white to blue, we're also running into a new problem. Will is staying super disciplined with his right arm, preventing me from closing the gap between his shoulder and locking fully onto a choke. To innovate now, I drop to my right hip, then circle my left leg around his arm, trapping it between my hips. Now because I can't put Willie on his side, instead I fall backwards and start to focus on Mission 3, moving the blade of my wrist over his neck. To utilize mission 4, we're going to focus on the twisting motion of the darts and bringing our elbow to my own chest, giving us more torque in the submission and eventually leading towards the tap. Alright, so it's worked on so far what people would consider the beginner belts of jujitsu, but now let's go for a real challenge, a purple belt named Billy. To give credit where credit is due, Billy is one of the most technical purple belts I know. And we can see that as I go for my outside pass, but he's very easily able to defend this and work into a deep half guard. <laughs> I'll attempt to wrap onto a headlock, but he's quick to the punch and pulls himself under my hips, making sure to maintain all the inside position over his arms and his legs, before then swinging back up to his knees, landing right into a double unders pass. Now if you guys watched the north-south passing progression video, I don't know why so many guard passes in Jiu Jitsu require stuffing your face into your opponent's nuts in order to have good technique. Things get a little more sensual as Billy rocks me up onto my shoulders with my legs dangling in the air before then attempting to pass north south but luckily I'm able to recover and sit out to my guard. From here I'll decide to stand up back to my feet and as I go to shock push Billy and swing his legs past for a Toriando, he stays really disciplined with his knee to elbow connection and he's able to retain me back to a knee cut. He tries to off-balance me or re-engage his feet back in front of him, but at a certain point I disengage then quickly re-engage with my underhook, flattening him out to his back and working to drop as much pressure as I can into him to start solidifying a pass. So it's actually quite amusing because right now I'm using an underhook and a crossface, however Billy's doing a good job wrapping up my leg, but I soon realized that I could also just step over into mount. Now mount is oddly becoming one of my best positions. However, the goal of this roll is to submit Billy with a Darce. To do that, I set a trap by swiveling over to one side, and a common rule in Jiu Jitsu is you never want to be flat on your back. So as he turns towards this side, we find ourselves with the objective of mission one completed, so we move on to mission two by shooting our hand deep under his neck. We complete mission three as the blade of our wrist rides close under his artery, and then to top it off with mission four, pay close attention how I'm on the right side of his head, but I slowly move towards the left, raising the elbow and twisting the head to give us the final tap of the day with the Darce choke. All right, so if you guys learned something from this video, consider subscribing so I can continue to put out free content like this. And most importantly, before you go, if you subscribe or if you don't subscribe, do yourself and your jujitsu a favor and click on this video right here to learn how you can blast knee cut through black belts in under 10 minutes.